the sovereign one, the healing one, the faithful one, the holy one, the just one, the righteous one. Come on, up, man. There is no defeat. In God we honor you. Theories, but, but God is 
but the creator and the author of everything. I could celebrate his greatness all day long, but he can be great without being good. I said, God can be great without being good. Because he could be the God who is great in creation, but then be a God who simply curses everything and everybody. And so Isaiah says, let me talk to you about not only the greatness of God, but the goodness of God. And let me tell you something, I wish I could hang my head right there and tell you that I'm thankful for the goodness of God because in his greatness, he could have cut me off a long time ago. In his greatness, he could have caused my moments to cease from rolling on a little while longer a long time ago. In his greatness, man will simply lay down and die, but in his greatness, he can also speak a word and man will get back up again. So I come to celebrate his greatness, but I'm grateful for his goodness because his goodness blessed me when I didn't deserve it. His goodness brought me when I didn't deserve it. His goodness kept me when I didn't deserve it. Would you just tap your name and say, I'm still here. Another year has come and gone and I'm still here. And I'm not still here because of me, but I'm still here because of him. It's not my greatness, it's his greatness. And it's not my goodness, it's his goodness. Because the Lord has shown been good to me. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. But he also reveals something else, Pastor Will. He, he, he also reveals that God is greater not that God is greater, but that God has greater things in store in this season. As I read, and I read real cautiously and carefully, here's what he shows me, that God has greater things in store in this season. Where you see that, Reverend, is right there in verse number 19. He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. So Isaiah says, that the people of God could count on God's divine intervention. Ooh, that's a sermon all by itself right there. That you can count on God's divine intervention. You can count on God showing up even when you think God ain't going to show up. You can count on God stepping in even when you think God may not step in. You can count on God being there even it looked like God is not there. I know many of you have read that little amen poem of footprints in the sand and there are times in life when it looked like you were there all by yourself. And here's what we're reminded that the footprints that you see are not yours but they are the ones who've been carrying you. You can look forward to in a new season God's divine intervention. And unless God intervenes, some things in your life will never change. Not only can you count on divine intervention, you can count on divine exhortation. What is exhortation? Exhortation is God's encouragement. Exhortation is God's empowerment. Exhortation is when God gets into your mind and tells you it's going to be all right. Exhortation is when God speaks a word to you and says, don't worry about it. Exhortation is when God speaks to you and says, I got this. Exhortation is when God speaks to you and says, you are more than a conqueror. Exhortation is when God speaks to you and says, if I'm for you, I'm more than the whole world against you. Not only can you count on divine intervention, you can count on divine exhortation. Can you touch somebody and tell them, I need God to speak a word to me. After all the things I've been through, what I need in 2019 is to hear God speak a word to me. I need God to drop a word in my spirit. I need God to speak a word to my soul. I need God to help me through some moments, to help me through some tears, to help me through some trials, to help me through some trouble, to help me through some heartaches, to help me through some heartbreaks. I need to hear a word from the Lord. Can you just touch somebody and say, I don't know what you came here for. I came here because I need a word from the Lord. Divine intervention. 
will bring about divine exhortation. And when you get divine intervention coupled with divine exhortation, here's what comes next, divine deliverance. I wish I had somebody here. Isaiah said, let me tell you what God is going to do. God going to step into your stuff. God going to step into your mess. God going to step into your disorder and bring order. God going to step into your confusion and bring some peace and bring promise and bring prosperity. And when God steps in, he ain't just going to deal with your situation. He going to also talk to you. And when God get through talking to you, if you hear what God says, God will deliver you. Help me, Lord Jesus. Try to find out if there's just one somebody here today who say, I need the Lord. I need him, I need him, I need him. I need the Lord and I need his deliverance because where I am, I cannot handle this and manage this all by myself. Isaiah revealed that God is always more. Can you say that word with me? More. Come on, say it like you ain't scared of it. More. Isaiah reveals that God is always more than what he has previously revealed himself to be. Hold on, let me say it one more time. Whatever God has revealed himself to be in your yesterday, Isaiah says, uh, don't worry about it. God is so much greater and God is so much gooder that God can show you some sides of him that you haven't already seen. That God can bring you from places he hasn't have, he have brought you from in the same way before. Lord have mercy. I guess I'm the only one going to shout right there. Because he is greater and gooder. Isaiah says, hold on right here, roll on. Verse number 18, remember ye not the former things, yeah. nor consider the things of old. Why? Because we want you to understand that the God that you serve is greater than whatever you've been through and gooder even after you done come through it. Help me, Lord Jesus. Remember not the former things. I asked myself, Deacon Chapman, what things is the Lord talking about? When he says, remember not the former things. The things God is willing to forget. Help me, Lord. Isaiah says to Israel, don't spend your time remembering stuff from your past that God is willing to forget. If God is willing to forget it, if God is willing to look beyond your faults and see your needs, why are you going to waste time, spend time remembering stuff that God ain't trying to remember? I'm trying to help somebody right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's what Isaiah says. Isaiah says, you know you've had some problems in your past. But don't remember them. You know that you've had some pitfalls and faults and failures and fallacies in your past. But don't focus on them. You know you made some mistakes. You know that you've had some sins. You know that you've done some unbecoming things relative to your behavior in the past. But Isaiah says, get past your past. Mm. Can I get you to make a statement of affirmation today? That starting this very day, January the 6th of 2019, I'm going to get past my past. Lord. See, see, that's the problem with some people who want to act like you ain't had no issues and problems in your past. Like you ain't got no skeletons in your closet. Like you ain't got some stuff that tripped you up, messed you up, made you slip up, fall down. Come on, keep it real. All of us. 
The Bible says, as sin help me preach your Holy Ghost and come short of the glory of God. But Isaiah said, God has got a new thing on the calendar for you. But you got to start by forgetting your past. You got to get past your past. Can I say it like that real simple? Say it with me, Robert. Let it go. Let it go. Woo, Lord have mercy on that. Come on, help me, Frank. Say, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Come on, help me, Sister Caldwell. Just say, let it go, let it go. That's all Isaiah is saying. That God wants to really bless you and take you to a whole new region, a whole new level, a whole new experience. But in order to get there, you got to start by letting some. Can I try to teach this lesson this morning? I, I, I don't apologize for my kind of preaching and teaching. He said, let it go, let it go. Forget those things behind you. That's what Paul says in the New Testament. He said, I forget those things that are behind And I press. That means I go forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. See, here's what God wants you to do in 2019. God wants you to move forward without looking backwards. Can I say that one more time, school? God wants me to go forward without looking backwards. How many of y'all know the story of, of Mrs. Lot way back in the, in the Old Testament? Huh? When the Lord told Abraham, say, go down there and get Lot and his family and bring them up out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he told them, gave them specific instructions and said, I'm going to bring you up out of here, deliver you out of here. But on your way up and out, I, I don't want you to turn back. I don't want you to look back. But Miss Lot, amen, refused to stop focusing on what God was trying to deliver her from. Can I, can I make it real plain for you? Sometimes we focus in too much on the stuff God trying to set us free from. We're focusing too much on the stuff God wants us to turn loose and to let go. God says it's time for you to get up out of there. And when you get up out of there, don't be looking back and thinking about going back. Because that ain't what I want for you. I want you to have a new season. I want you to have a new day. I want you to have a fresh start. I want you to have a new beginning. I want you, Lord, have mercy, to have a makeover. But rather than getting a makeover, she got messed up. Y'all know the story, don't you? She turned into a pillar of salt because she wouldn't let go of what God was trying to save her from. This is going to be real simple, but I'm going to ask you to do something. Refuse to allow your past to ruin your future. Don't, 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 don't let whatever you didn't get right last year ruin what you could get right this year. Don't let what you didn't do last year Stop you from doing according to the word of God, the will of God, and the way of God this year. Don't let the fact that you failed in your yesterday stop you from succeeding in your today and in your tomorrow. Sometimes the problem is that God has got more for us, but we let where we messed up ruin us from going into a new era. Can't get over. Can't get past. Something, my brothers and sisters, when it comes to ourselves, we just got to accept it. And then dismiss it. And then move on. Lord. As much as I don't want to accept some of the stuff I've done. Y'all can look at me if you want. Because the Lord knows I did. As much as I don't want to accept some of the things I've done in life, the real truth is I might as well go on and accept 
the fact that I did it. And don't ask Flip Wilson to come and bail me out. <laughs> Talking about the devil made me do it. <laughs> well, some stuff the devil didn't have to make me do. Oh, have mercy. I got to accept the fact that I did it. Dismiss the fact that I did it. And then move on. Listen, in spite of your rebellion, here's what Isaiah said. God is going to rescue you. In spite of your rebellion, God is going to redeem you to himself. Oh, I started shouting when I put that down. In spite of your rebellion, God is going to release favor on your behalf. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. Can I run over that one more time? There may be somebody who's trying to take a note or two and you don't want to miss this. Here's what's going to happen. Isaiah says, if you are ready for a new beginning, know this, that God is ready also. And because God is ready, in spite of your past rebellion, God says, I'm going to rescue from where you are. And not only am I going to rescue you from where you are, I'm going to redeem you to myself. In other words, even though you disown me, I'm going to still own you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Is there anybody here who know there's been some time when you didn't own God like you should have? You didn't stay close to God like you should have. You didn't walk with God like you should have. You didn't talk to God like you should have. Well, here is what God says. Even though you disown me, God says, I will redeem you and keep a relationship between me and you, even though you don't deserve me. Oh, I feel a shout in my own spirit. When I think about what the Lord has looked in my own life. I can't help but shout hallelujah and say thank you Lord for redeeming me to you even when there were times I pushed you away. I wasn't drawing near to you but you kept drawing near to me. Ooh, somebody don't know when to shout. Don't know when to shout. But on top of that, here's what he said. He said, Minister Walk, he said, he said, not only will God redeem you to himself, but because of the relationship, God will release favor on your behalf. Is there anybody here who needs a little favor right now? Some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all, some of y'all ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. But let me tell you something. I need some favor, honey. I want the favor of God. I want God to open the windows of heaven, pull me out of blessing. I don't have room enough to receive. I want the God to give me the help, give me strength. I want God to keep me clothed in my right mind. Because sometimes people are driving me crazy as a basset book. I want God to settle my nerve because I'm nervous sometimes with all of the mess that's going on. I need God. Release favor. Tell your neighbor, favor, favor, favor. Maybe you want furniture, but I want favor. Maybe you want a new car, but I want favor. Maybe you want hot money, but I want favor. Maybe you want a new honey, but I want favor. Maybe you want a new coat, but I want favor. Maybe you want a new house, but I want favor. Maybe there are a lot of things you want, but if I can just have the favor of God. When God gives me favor, Whatever I need, God will provide. I know there are just one or two people in here who can tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that when you honor him right, God will even give you the desires of your own heart. <laughs> Ooh, if I could just testify right there. If I could testify right there and tell you that God is a God. Who gives favor to whomever he wants to give it to. And so Isaiah says he will release favor on your behalf. Where is the preacher? It's right there in the text. It's right there in verse number 18. He says, I will even make a way. I will release favor. <sighs> this is going to be real simple, but can I tell you this? There is more ahead of you than what is behind you. Yeah. Yeah. 
When I read what Isaiah is saying, Brother Captain, he's trying to tell these people, I was going to call them something else, but he was trying to tell these people that there is more ahead of you when you hear what God is saying than what is behind you. But if you get hung up on what's behind you, you'll never be able to have an appreciation for what God has in front of you, ahead of you. Help me, Lord Jesus. He said, remember not the things of your past, but know this, uh -huh. I will do a new thing, which means I can do more in front of you than what has already happened behind you. Some stuff ought to stay in the rear view mirror. Because if it comes to the windshield, you already messed up. I said some stuff ought to stay in the rear view mirror of life rather than being in the windshield. Because it blocks your vision of going forward. And let me tell you something. If you spend your time driving, watching the rearview mirror, you're going to run over all your blessings and wreck your blessings that are ahead of you going forward. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to say it to you real simple. If you fell down, get up. I'm going to say it real simple. If you Messed up, get over it. If you fell down and messed up, get up and get going. Well, that's all Isaiah is telling you. He said, neither consider the thing of all. He's literally saying, Israel, your present environment is not greater than your past enslavement. Your present environment yeah. is not greater than your past exodus. Your present environment is not greater than your past enemies. You got to know the history of the nation of Israel. And all Isaiah is doing is help them to take a reflective look back and to understand that where you are right now in Babylon is not greater than your past enslavement in Egypt. If I could get you out of Egypt, I can get you out of Babylon. Are y'all hearing me here? He says your present environment where you are in Babylon and your ability to get out of there, amen, is not greater than your exodus from Egypt. I was able to get you out of there even after 400 years. And your enemies today are not greater than your enemies yesterday. You see, <laughs> yes, let me add live for him a little bit. Isaiah, Isaiah is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. Can you help me right here, Sister Tammy Bowl? Find two or three people, just tap them on the shoulder and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you can't touch them, just point in that direction and tell them, you ain't seen nothing yet. You thought you saw something way back in, the, in Egypt, but I need to tell you that where you are right now ain't got nothing to compare with what I did in Egypt. I'm greater and gooder now than I was in demonstration back then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You ain't seen nothing yet. God said, I want you to have a new season. You ain't seen nothing yet. 
I want you to have a new beginning. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to have a new era in your life. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to prosper like you ain't never prospered before. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to be the head and not the tail. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to be up rather than down. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to be found and not lost. You ain't seen nothing yet. I want you to be victorious and not a victim. You ain't seen nothing yet. Then you can touch somebody else. Tell them God wants you to know. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I promise you my sermon won't be as long as the football game last night. For those of you who think I preached too long, I'm still shorter than the average movie. Television show. Listen, 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 listen. Ooh, you, you got to see what I saw. Here's what, here's what, here's, here's, here's what Isaiah helps us to understand about this whole matter. He helps us to understand that in your deliverance yesterday, God was undeterred by opposing circumstances. When God delivered you from yesterday, he was undeterred by opposing circumstances. In other words, uh, wherever you were, whatever you were dealing with, whatever you were going through, however you were trying to make it and meander your way through the mess you was in, it didn't stop God one bit from getting you out of where you were. Undeterred by opposing circumstances. Okay, I see. I got to help you right here. If you've been to Sunday school, you know the story. Here's the story, Reverend God had begun the exodus from the land of Egypt. And they came, minister favorite, to the Red Sea. And the Red Sea represented an opposing circumstance. In other words, Lord, I want to go farther. But I got all of this water in front of me. I want to get to what you promised me. But I got a whole Red Sea in front of me. I got mountains on either side. Y'all ain't hearing me here. Mountains on the left, mountains on the right, all of this water. And even if you were to take a picture, you couldn't dip out enough water to get to safety on the other side in a lifetime. And yet here's what God says. In spite of whatever your opposing circumstance, I'm greater than your circumstance. Anything that would keep you from going far, God says I'm greater than than that. Are y'all hearing me here? Can you say this with me? God is greater than anything that would keep me from going forward. And that's why he could open a Red Sea so that the children of Israel could cross over onto the other side and make their way to the land of promise because he is undeterred by opposing circumstances. And I need to tell you that there are some things that's going to try to block your blessing. There are some things that's going to try to keep you from getting what God wants you to have. There are some people that's going to be blocking your blessing and keeping you from getting what God wants you to have. But you got to know that the God you serve is greater than opposing circumstances. Hold on, I ain't through yet. Because I'm getting ready to show you something else. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because not only Minister Taylor is God greater than opposing circumstances, but here's what Isaiah says. In blessing you with a new season, God was undeterred by hostile people. Let me say that one more time. When God is trying to take you somewhere, God ain't bothered about the people who's bothering you. Hold on, hold on, that ain't in my Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look at 